Right, today we're going to talk about the periodic table and why perhaps that's the best table that there happens to be. I think so. Kind of a chemistry nut, but uh, I think it's a really important table and we're going to talk about why that is. So, um, periodic table was developed by a guy named Dmitry Mendeleev and um, the way that he built this table was by putting atoms with similar properties into what we now call families. Uh, families are also known as columns or groups, but uh, the properties of these atoms were similar, so he put them into a grouping so that they all were in the same area, and that's a vertical arrangement. Now, um, these properties, uh, the family kind of ideas, like if you were to think about your brother or sister, you might have some similar looks, and these atoms are the same way. They have similar properties. They behave similarly. Now, these properties show something called periodicity. If we arrange these atoms by increasing atomic number, every so often you're going to find an atom that's super reactive with water, and that might be the alkali metals. So then if you start to stack these alkali metals on top of each other, that's how we start to get this periodic table. Um, because of these property arrangements, we can predict properties of atoms. And that's going to be another talk in the future is uh, periodic trends, but we can predict properties of atoms even if we don't know those properties of that atom. So some basic, basic stuff that you need to know. We can talk about the horizontal arrangement of atoms on the periodic table. We call those horizontal arrangements periods rows or series. And um, these periods or rows are set up so that the atomic number increases uh, as you go left to right. And in general, the atomic mass or mass number, um, average atomic mass also increases. Now on the other hand, we have vertical arrangements of, of atoms, and we've already called those groups or families or columns, and those are based on similar properties. Looking at the periodic table, we can divide it into some big regions. On the left-hand side of the stair-step line, we have metals. On the right-hand side of the stair-step line, we have non-metals. And right along the stair-step line, we're going to have something called uh, metalloids or semi-metals. A subset of metals would be the transition metals. And then underneath this, that isn't shown in this picture, would be the rare earth metals, including the lanthanide and actinide series. The metalloids here, circled along the stairs, include boron, silicon, arsenic, and tellurium, skip, aluminum, germanium, antimony. So there's six along the stairs, six on the right side of the stairs, and then two on the left-hand side of the stairs. It's also important to know hydrogen is a nonmetal. Even though it's on the metal side, it just electronically belongs over with the metals, even though it's not a metal itself. And then in general, as you go further left, the atoms become more metallic. The more right you go, the atoms become more non-metallic. We're going to learn a little bit more what that means. So property-wise, the atoms that are on the left-hand side are metals. We already talked about that. So here are some properties of them. They're malleable. They can be hammered into thin sheets, ductile pulled into wires. Most of them are solid at room temperature. They're shiny or lustrous, good conductors of heat. These tend to lose electrons. Um, Nonmetals, on the other hand, are the opposite of metals, so they're poor conductors. They're not shiny, they're dull, they're brittle, they can't be hammered or can't be drawn into wires. Um, and most of these uh, will want to gain electrons. So uh, mostly lose electrons, mostly gain electrons. That's at least how we look at it for our class. There are some examples where it works differently than that, but lose electrons for metals, gain electrons for nonmetals. And then the nonmetals come in all three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, but most of these are gases. Now, because metalloids are in between, we have the Venn diagram, they're going to have properties of both. So, um, combination of metal and nonmetal properties. However close they are to a certain side, so for example, the two on the left hand side, germanium and antimony, are going to be more metallic, whereas boron, silicon, arsenic, and tellurium are going to be more nonmetallic. So we already talked about metals being conductors, ductile, malleable, and lustrous. And then nonmetals are going to be uh, malleable, not malleable, not lustrous, not ductile. Metalloids, a combination of the two. And um, depending on what side of the stairs, we're going to find that they tend to dis uh, display that kind of property more often than the other. If they're on the right side, more nonmetallic. On the left side, more metallic. 
So other named regions on the periodic table, specifically, again, reminder of the transition metals, and then the lanthanide series and the actinide series along the bottom. And don't forget, hydrogen, even though it's chilling out by the metals, is actually a non-metal. Most atoms on the periodic table are found as part of the compounds because atoms want to react to become more stable. But there's some atoms that don't form compounds that readily, specifically the noble gases and then the noble metals. Now, if you think about these metals, these are jewelry metals. And part of why they're really good for jewelry is because they don't react and they don't turn into something else when you're wearing them. We can also find uh, a couple atoms that come with a buddy in their natural state. So we call these the Hunkelbrifs, H-O-N-C-L-B-R-I-N-F. They all come as a diatomic molecule. Hunkelbrif is a mnemonic for remembering that. And then finally, most of the atoms are, are solid state at room temperature. So we can tell because their symbol is showing that they're solidly filled in solid letters, solidly filled in, solid at room temperature. Then we have bubble letters, the ones that are open. Remember that a bubble would be filled with a gas, and if it's a gas, it's going to be gaseous state. So bubble letters for gas. Finally, the only two, these are the only two liquids at room, at room temperature, bromine and mercury. Leaning letters, they're italicized, so their letters are leaning. Leaning letters are liquids. So what you should have learned about during this uh, discussion was that there was an inventor of the periodic table who put the uh, elements in order based on properties. His name was Dmitry Mendeleev. And then you should have learned that uh, there are regions of the periodic table. We have metals and nonmetals, metalloids. We can talk about horizontal and vertical arrangements of the periodic table. And you should have learned about some properties for each of those. Finally, the periodic table can tell us a little bit more information about the atoms. You can tell the state of matter based on uh, how the symbols happen to be written. Hope that helps.